It seems like there are times that we all are going through a battle. <clears throat> back in the back in the time, Old Testament, New Testament, and cities were were built with walls around them, and th those walls were a couple of different things. Um, it not only protected the people within, but it kept people from attacking or the enemy coming in. It produced a, a, a there a, a, a sense of safety and, and so forth. But sometimes, in a more personal way, we, we sometimes build up these, what we call a stronghold in our lives. Now, those strongholds in our lives are the same, same type of thing, right? It, those walls. We, it protects us, keeps us safe, and keeps people from coming in. I think there's kind of, kind of some secret things that we, we deal with as we're growing up. I don't know. We don't let anybody really share about it, but because we've made a bargain with the situation or that thing, we produce a, a stronghold in our lives that prevents us from moving on, prevents us from, and we think with that stronghold. Let, let, let's, for instance, if you have suffered any type of abuse in your life growing up, I don't care. There are many, because of that abuse, become bargaining with the abuse. In other words, they bargain with the abuse so much that they end up, an individual that has suffered that way ends up not trusting anybody. And separation from other people. Don't want anybody to know that or I need help and I need somebody to pray with me or deal with that situation. It's a, it's a, it's a, a stronghold and it produces a, a mistrust. I think another stronghold that sometimes we produce in our lives and is there because we bargain with it is that of That is thinking I need to do something in order to earn a person's love. Sometimes that happens in families where, where you might have said to yourself, you know, no matter what I do, I'm just not appreciated around this house. And I've tried. I've worked real hard. I tried to please. And so the bargaining goes on with that so that I continue that in my adult life and I continue to try to do things in order to get approval. And it's a stronghold. And those are areas sometimes we don't recognize in ourselves and where it comes from, because we begin to act naturally in that way. It becomes our normal in our life and how we relate to other people. It becomes our normal. And I want to say to you, but what I am sharing here and will be sharing from Joshua Chapter 5 is that there's a way that for those strongholds to come down. There's a way that, that, the, that God's Spirit can break down that wall that we built up, that bargain that we've made. Join with me in Joshua chapter 5. <clears throat> 
And let me set this up here. We have, have another generation has just crossed the Jordan. They've been in the wilderness for 40 years, and they crossed the Jordan. They've taken, they've taken stones out of the middle of the Jordan River and set it up as a monument or memorial, if you will, to what God has done way back in the time, time when they came out of Egypt, but also crossing this Jordan River into this promised land that God had promised. And they come to a place called Gilgal. Gilgal. Now you wouldn't know what the meaning of that would be if you just would look it up. And it means to roll over. In fact, in chapter 5, when they've gone through the, uh, the process of again identifying who they are, at Gilgal they circumcise because there was a whole generation that never, when they were in the wilderness never did. And we find in chapter 5, verse 9, these words. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the approach of Egypt from you. So the place was called Gilgal to this day. Gilgal means to roll over. By the fact of identifying themselves in circumcision and renewing that covenant in the flesh, they begin to realize what their real identity is in entering the promised land. They've crossed the Jordan as if you'd say baptism, and they entered into the place where again, this renewal of this covenant in their flesh and a reminder in that spot that God had rolled away all the stuff of the past. Because now their identity becomes not what they bargained in their life over that 40 years in the wilderness, but now it becomes different. It's a renewal of the identity and who they really are. They're his children. They're Israel. And they're in covenant relationship with God. Their identity, who God says that they are, is wrapped up in that, in, in the, again, renewing in their flesh the covenant that was given to Abraham. But then he knows the next thing they do. Verse 10. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate the food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites. But that year, they ate the produce of Canaan. Where are they? In the land! They reestablished the, the covenant they had in Abraham through the act of circumcision. And now they're celebrating the Passover. And what was that all about? Egypt is rolled off of their, their past, is taken care of, dealt with. And so now it's a celebration. And now they're starting the feast in the land. And did you notice what happened? So the reminder of their redemption out of Egypt, they began to eat in the land and no manna came anymore. Why? Because they were already in the land. They don't need that anymore. God's already provided that for them in their consumption. No longer than that type of miracle to happen. 
And now they ate. The promise that God had given them that this was a land flowing with milk and honey. So I, you dealing with those bargaining areas, maybe, those strongholds in your life? These two things are very important for you to deal with. What's your identity? What does God say and call you? He came into his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him gave the right to become children of God. Not of flesh, not of human will, but of God. And that's what God, our Heavenly Father, says of you. You're my child. That's your identity. That's who you are. Not that stuff out of Egypt or that past that you would have, but your identity. That's what God says you are. Not that the lies that you've received in your life and you've bargained with from other people and what they've said about you or what you've done or you think you have to perform in order to get that. No. No. He says, I love you, you're mine. But then there's a really uh, interesting thing that happens next. And I don't know whether you've ever read it before, but you'll read it now. Okay? Verse 13. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand and Joshua went up to him and asked "Ah, are you for us or for our enemy listen carefully what he says neither nope no way not for you not for them no he replied But as a commander of the army of the Lord, I've now come. And Joshua fell down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy and Joshua did so Joshua recognized this person who represents God and some say this is Jesus before his birth it's called a it's called that that reflection we find it often in the old testament the angel of the lord the messenger of god here he's commander I may never, okay, we already sang that one, all right? He's the commander of the Lord's army. And the question is, are you for me or for you? The question is, is is it for me or for my enemy? The question is, and he says, no way, I've come to take over. So worship, take your shoes off. What's the command? Take your shoes off. What? Worship. This is holy ground you're standing on now because I'm here. I'm present. And that's where we all need to get to. To recognize that he is in command. And that we too, 
Not only he gives us the identity of who we are and calls us by name, of who we are, you are my child. What should that do in us? Praise, worship, recognize who he is. That I don't run my life anymore. (laughs) It's not up to me. It's only as I'm related to him. I find that that's a place that we all need to get to eventually. If we're going through things in our life. And you don't understand. You, you, you might say the question, you know, what's going on? What is, what's happening? I don't get it. That's Joshua. Because he has a stronghold setting up in front of him. You know what that stronghold was? Jericho. And God knew for the people here that before they could take care of Jericho, they had to know who they were and who their God is. Because they would never receive instruction of how to battle and how to get, take out Jericho unless they trusted the commander. They wouldn't even hear it. And dealing with the strongholds that are in our life and the breaking down of that strongholds, we have to come to that place of knowing who we are and knowing who really is God in our life. There's a third thing, and, I, and it has to do with actually seeing it done before it happens. That, that even if you don't sense it or feeling this, this thing breaking down, is to be able to recognize that the Holy Spirit will give you the vision to see it done. That's called faith. Look at this. Chapter 6, just uh, at the point. He's still conversing with the man. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because the Israelites, no one went out and no one came in. Now notice what was said. Now he's still talking to this fellow, so now it's, he addresses the Lord, all right? So it's, he's not just, these God present here. He says, and then the Lord said to Joshua, see... I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its kings and its fighting men. Then he gives them instruction of how to battle, but notice what he tells them to do. It hasn't happened yet. The walls had not come down yet. They haven't marched around yet. But what does the Lord do? tell Joshua to do. See it done. See it accomplished. See, I have delivered. It says, can you see it? Before the walls of Jericho came down and before they even marched around and, and sort of God, the Lord, wanted Joshua to see it accomplished already. Now, he may not see it. Okay, I'm, we're talking spiritually. He doesn't have, unless he sees seeing a vision at this point. He could. That's possible. But this is called faith. Having the confidence that something will be accomplished even when you don't see it. You have the confidence and the conviction that it's going to occur. Because of this this thing, because you've already worshipped, you've already identified who you are, 
You, you know who you are. You hear what God says you are. You're a child. You've, you, you've brought your spirit into worship and recognizing who God is, that he's the one. I'm going to receive instructions, and now you need, we need to see with conviction it's done. Because it's the Lord who says, see, I've delivered the king and the armies and the city into your hand. So how's your vision? About those areas, you know, that you bargained with? Have you recognized who God says you are? Do you know who he is? Better off does he know you. <laughs> right? Do you have a relationship, an intimate relationship with him? Have you ever came to a place where you, where you worship? I don't know about you, but I have had experience, and maybe you have too, where you're going to a worship experience and it's like time is gone. And you, and you, and in the worship experience, you go. I've been there that long. <laughs> Probably the only equivalent to that is you guys being on Facebook or something. You know, you're sitting in the computer and it goes, and you look at a time. You know, why? Why does that happen? Because your full attention is given to what you're doing. Now, some of you guys experience that watching a football game. Right? Watching a football game or whatever your sport is. And you're so absorbed in it that it don't matter about any other thing. And then you look at the time and go, wow. That game's over already. I can't believe it. You see, this worship experience and recognizing who God is. Is having such a. Such. An experience of worship that we sense eternity, that we sense heaven in that worship. And time doesn't matter because we're so absorbed in who he is. And he says to us today, look at those things those strongholds that you've bargained in your life, see it. I have delivered you already. It's accomplished. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. That song in itself, <clears throat> that song in itself says that you're so in a worship position with the Lord that everything else, every 
stronghold, every other thing that you're dealing with in your life, everything else, when you're in that place of worship, you gain the strength and the ability to stand. And may I say it? Take down the Jericho. I love it. In our life. If we sow that intimate relationship with our Father, He calls us into that. We just let Him. We all have doors there in our life, like the strongholds. We seem like there are doors in our life, in our in our, uh, we say our, our house, our soul house. And there's some of those doors are locked. And we say to the Lord, I don't want you to go in there. I don't, I, I, I keep it locked. You know, that's why I'm locked. No, 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 no. I, let, and God says, I want, look in there. I want, to, I want you to see there. And you go outside the door and you go, oh, no, 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 not in that one. Not in that area of my life. What will you today unlock the door? That stronghold, open it up, let the door open, the gate open. And let him come in. Will you do that? Nobody can do it for you. You're the only one that can make that decision to unlock that door and let him in. Will you do that today? Would you pray with me? Lord, I pray for those that are struggling with the area of abuse in their life and they've made bargain. Help them to unlock that door and let you in. They can learn to trust you and your unconditional love in their life with no conditions, no judgment. That they would open the door, that they would learn to trust you because you are good. Lord, I also pray for those that are struggling with the need to, to perform, to earn your love, to your, earn other people's love by performance and thinking that's how it is with you. Lord, today that door would be unlocked and enter in, Lord, to clean up misconception of who you are, that in your unconditional love towards us, you do not demand love because, or us to love back that you love us anyway. And you loved us before we were even born. You loved us. And you formed us. And you created us in your image. There are no conditions with you that we must do certain in order to gain it, your love. But we are convinced today 
of that love that you have for us. We receive your peace of your presence. We receive your joy of your presence. For in your presence there's fullness of joy. Today, we take into ourselves what you have said, that you love us. And we take that and we take you at your word. In Jesus we pray. Amen.